Hey, Sonic River here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to some more granular synthesis. And in this video, we're going to apply some of the tips and tricks and synth devs that I had shown you in the previous videos. We're going to apply that to some music composition. Now, I haven't composed anything, I'm just starting, but I really want to show you application. I want to actually compose something with granular synthesis, so here we go. But before we do, I just wanted to show you a small reference, a pattern reference of subclasses for my P bind. We're including P sir, P lace, P pat lace, and P slide. Now I'm not going to explain these in great detail. In fact, I have a five part series that goes into that in depth with demonstrations. But why don't we just uh, post a few things, post some values to get an understanding of where we are. So this is PSIR. Now we have a receiver of five, five values as seen here, five iterations, and the first two values of this array. Because we have three remaining values that are nil, it has selected value two in the first two values before returning the rest nil. Let's try a few others. This time we have four values, so it has returned four for us, and of course the receiver five. Let's see if we can get five for that nice value seven there. There we go. So good to go there. And let's add some length and range. So we have a random range between values one and 10, iterated 10 times. So let's see what this piece gives us. All right, I have zero, two, three, five, seven, zero, zero, two, three, five. So what does that mean? Well, if we count along in this array, we can find the value. 0, 2, 3, 5, 7, which is 5, plus 0. Before starting over, had it gone up to 20, we would have had 0, 2, 3, 5, 7, 0, 0, 2, 3, 5, 7, 0. So the value of 6. Let's try a few more. 0, 2, 3, 5, 7, 0, 2. 0, 2, 3. So before it starts over, we land on 2. So that is 0, 2, 3, 5, 7, which is 5. 0 is 6. 2 is 7. So it has evaluated for us and selected for us the value 7. And that's pretty cool. <laughs> Probably musically boring, but that is the value 1 at the 0th place inside the array, which is zero. Now it could be one and it would have come up one. So the zero is not anything to do with the zeroth place in the array. That is just how you speak in Super Collider. I love that word zeroth. It sounds awesome. Anyway, let's go ahead and move along. P lace is interlacing inside this main array, these two sub arrays. So we're going to have 12 instances and I'm just going to evaluate it and see what happens. So we have here 124, 135, 128, 134. So if you're not quite understanding what's going on, we take the first instance of the main array followed by the first instance, or value I should say, of the second subarray. Actually, it's the first subarray. <laughs> and the first value of the second subarray. So that is one, two, four, as we see here, followed by one, three, five, going in that order, as we see here, followed by one, two, four, as we, oops, not four, sorry, one, two, eight, because it has to go in order. And this subarray has one more value than this subarray. So there's a little bit of interlacing going on. 
and our last instance is one, two, four. So hopefully that made sense. I was just getting all mixed up right there, but that's that's cool. It's gonna be musically engaging, hopefully. Now P Pat Lace is pretty interesting. It can be effective for something like attack or release, where we have a couple of sequences here. And you just go between the two. We have our first value, followed by our first value in this P seek followed by the second, and the second, and the third, and the third, and so on, in 24 instances. So we have that value, followed by 0.5, and our second value in the first pseq, followed by our second value in the second pseq, and so on. And I'm not including Geom in my score currently, the score I have, but I thought I could bring it up for you because it's pretty interesting. So we're going to have a PSeq and then a PGeom. Now PGeom is going to have a start value of one, and in 24 instances, it's going to be multiplied for every sequence, for every subsequent value, it's going to be multiplied by 0.8, thus reducing the value. So we start with our first value here in the first PC, then we start with one, and then you notice it's getting smaller and smaller, just steadily. And this is very effective for coming from a, a rather long attack or slow attack to a very short attack or fast attack. But my word of warning to you is I wouldn't include PGM for something like infinity. I would keep it at a fixed value, and depending on what values you choose, it's probably going to range between 1 and 100. <laughs> that's, that's a little arbitrary, but uh, I've noticed I don't really go too far, especially when you're doing things like pitch. And I really would be careful if you're exploring amplitude and all of that, but it is pretty fun. On to P-slide. Let's just go ahead and evaluate the code and see what we get. All right, so we have 1, 25, 33, 25, 33, 5, 33, 5, 75, 5, 75, 1. So you might have an understanding of what's going on, but I'll go ahead and clarify. In 24 instances, we are going up 3 in the array in order. And then when we're finished with that, we actually go up one from the first value, starting at the zeroth value, which is 0.1. For now, I'm not going to evaluate this tempo clock. I would like to start rather slowly, but it's there for your syntactical purposes if you want to change the value in real time. Let's go ahead and get started with our sample. So let's go ahead and mess with some examples. I have a few things you can see commented out because I wanted you to hear the nature of the sounds before messing with values and pattern subclasses. So we have a pretty straightforward duration where between every note event is a quarter of a beat depending on the beats per minute. And then we have a very short attack followed by a relatively short release. We, we need these values short. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and hear how this sounds. All right, so our rate has a piecer with this array, where we have zero is the original pitch, that original rate, that normal speed, and it's got a, a D quality. The pitch is D. So we have D followed by a major second, which is E, 
followed by a minor third, which is F, followed by a fourth, which is G, and seven, which is the fifth, which is A. And seeing this list here, as we had infinity, 0, 2, 3, 0, 2, 3, 0, 2, 3, 0, 2, 3. So 3 was selected. Let's try something else. It's pretty interesting. It included all pitches there, as you can hear. 0, 2, 3, 5, 7. 0, 2, 3 before starting over. So it chose for us the number 8. I'm going to go ahead and lengthen that attack value. I think now. 0, 2, 3, 5, 7, 0, 2, 3, 5, 7. Either and picked 5 or 10. I did realize you can either do 5 or 2 times <laughs> that, which is 10. So 5 and 10 would give you the same result. If it's infinity, of course, we have no way of knowing which value it is. I'll give it 6 then. <laughs> Zero two three five seven zero two zero two three five seven zero two. So seven was selected. Now let's go ahead and add some variety to our Durkey, where we have P lace, starting with uh, 0 0.5 here and 0 0.25 or a quarter of a beat. So half a beat, quarter of a beat, followed by one complete beat half a beat, half a beat, quarter of a beat, half a beat, half a beat, half a beat, half a beat, quarter of a beat, quarter of a beat. And let's go ahead and get rid of this trace and I think we're going to put it here. Actually, not there, here. This should work. All right, let's hear it. And actually, let's uh, transpose an octave higher. I think that was six being pulled from here because I was hearing in sequence the first five plus the zeroth value. All right, let's uh, include a P slide to our release, where we have four infinity, three steps, followed by one as we had seen in the previous example here, and then starting with our zeroth value. So let's go ahead and take it away. I think I'm going to transpose it up a fourth. For the next time. And I realized I kept the trace for the dir key, so let's go ahead and, and place that for the release key. Now, of course, you can add trace to all these at the same time, but I'd like to show you the list and what's going on with the current application. So let's go ahead and try that again. Ooh, little little high frequency there. A 
lots to explore as far as sound color and quality, of course. <laughs> All right, so we have 0 0.01, 0 0.5, 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 0 0.1, 0 0.25, 0 0.01, 0 0.5, 0 0.1, 0 0.5, and then 0.5, 0 0.01, 0 0.25 and point one, point two five, point thirty three, and all that good stuff. Maybe, maybe not too much. Let's say, try that. And let us take this back, and then uncomment that and comment this. And I believe if I have this correct, we would have trace here. my favorite but it's part of exploring it's part of troubleshooting and it's part of getting that right sound for your composition purposes so hopefully you enjoyed that this is just one sound file you know I, I'll, I'll explore you know I'm gonna keep my headphones down for this but I'm gonna change the position let's go ahead and change the position see see what happens That is quite nice. I do like that. I like that position. Let's go ahead and work our way up incrementally. I'm going to comment this out again and maybe give a relatively short attack. And let's try four as we had done three or 30% in. This is 40% in the sound file. That must have been a part of the sound file where I was really drawing up some harmonics, some overtones from my violin. Probably sol ponticello, maybe some artificial harmonics, I don't know. But it sounds pretty cool. Let's continue. Oh, that's kind of nice. It's getting a little crazy. Now I am going to risk some high frequencies. Let's see how this is. This is pretty quiet. 
I must have been decaying. I must have been sustaining my bow right at the tip. Let's go down an octave. That's pretty interesting. That's an interesting texture. realized I left the trace method there for you. <laughs> so it's relatively quiet, which tells me that I'm in a very soft part of the sound file, as if I've just finished a dramatic gesture with the violin. Yeah, I think we can get into some really interesting textures and sounds and soundscapes. Maybe for something like ambient music or down tempo. So lots to explore. You know, this is just with one of my four sound files. So I want to try to find something very interesting. And I haven't explored using pattern subclasses for something like position or panning or amplitude and all of that good stuff. So lots to be had, lots to be explored. Thank you so much for watching. Always be on the lookout for some more sound experimentation every Thursday and some live commentary every Monday nights at 9.30 p.m. Eastern time. And until I see you next, keep producing the art you love and I will catch you later. Thank you.